So, derive the equation of an ellipse, not from the conic section properties, but from the constant distance of any point on it from its two foci. Meaning this. Just as with a circle, a circle is a set of points that remain the same distance from one fixed point, an ellipse is a set of points where the sum of the distances of that point to any two fixed points always remains the same. So that using a loop like this, and since the distance in the middle always stays the same, I then get an ellipse. The same technique could be used to mark out an elliptical piece of ground and so on. The main point is that the distance always remains the same. This distance between them is fixed, so these two parts always add up to the same amount. They're in line here, and at the top when it's symmetrically placed, it means that both of those must be equal, and equal to half of that total distance. So that if I have an ellipse, and I put my two fixed points here and here, call that C1, a distance C back from the origin, and this one C2, a distance C forward from the origin, and let it intersect the x-axis at A and the y-axis at B, then the total distance involved is going to be, well that's A minus an amount C, and that's A plus an amount C, so the total distance is going to be 2A. So that in particular, this distance must also equal 2a, and since those two parts are the same, they must equal a each, from which you get a little triangle that you can refer to, where that's the origin, and that's a, that's b, and that's c. So there's a simple Pythagoras connection between the two. So, to find the equation of that, you need to find the connection between the coordinates of any point that belongs on it. And that connection will be the distance of the point to C1 and the distance of the point to C2 must be the same as 2A because it's the same all the way around. So we can start off that way then. The distance of the point to C1 plus the distance of the point to C2 must be equal to 2A. Straight away there's going to be an equation with square roots in it. So that I've got in this case, I've got that x minus negative c, so x plus c squared, plus y minus 0 squared, plus the distance from the other point, so the square root of x minus c squared plus y minus 0 squared must equal 2a. I'll need to get rid of this part, but we need to remember that ABC connection for later. So that must equal 2A. Right, how do you deal with that equation with square roots in it? Well, you have to square both sides. I don't want to square them quite yet, because this will produce a nasty twice the product. I think I'd rather move that over here out of the way. So I'll leave this one the way it is. X plus C squared, and that's just Y squared, equals 2a minus the square root of x minus c squared plus y squared. And now try squaring it. So squaring that is quite easy. x plus c squared plus y squared. This, to square it, will require to square the first square the last and have twice the product in the middle. Well, I don't mind squaring the first. Twice the product, that will be 4a root, so I'm still left with a square root, c squared, plus the square of that x minus c squared plus y squared. Next part, isolate the square root so it can get dealt with separately. So I'll take this over here. 4a times the square root of x minus c squared plus y squared will equal whatever's left here. Well, I've got my 4a squared. Luckily, I can get rid of some of the terms. They can go. So I'm left with an x minus c squared, subtract an x plus c squared. Now I'm going to have to square both sides again to get this, rid of this square root. So I'm going to have 4a squared plus, but luckily that's a difference of two squares. So it will be the product of the first one, 
the sum minus the difference. The sum of them being 2x, the difference of them being minus 2c. So that's going to equal 4a squared minus 4cx. Another handy thing is, before I start squaring, there's a 4 all over the place. So I could take the 4s out. So I've got a times the square root of x minus c squared plus y squared equals a squared minus cx. Now square everything. So a squared times x minus c squared plus y squared equals, again I've got to square up both of these, so it'll be a to the 4 minus 2a squared cx plus c squared x squared. Not too bad. Multiply this lot out. a squared times, so I've got x squared minus 2cx plus c squared for the bracket plus y squared equals a to the 4 minus 2a squared cx plus c squared x squared. Now go back up to the top. Getting close here. Well that was the main technique over of getting rid of those square roots in two separate goes. So putting this back up to the top, I've got this. a squared x squared minus 2a squared cx plus a squared c squared plus a squared y squared so far equals a to the 4 minus 2a squared cx plus c squared x squared. The other pair can go. Next thing would be put all that letters on one side, the x's and y's together. So I've got a squared x squared, I could take over that, minus c squared x squared, leave that in there, plus a squared y squared equals, I've got a to the 4, and I could bring over minus a squared c squared. x squareds could go together, a squared minus c squared x squared, plus a squared y squared equals, and again, take out the a squared, I'm left with a squared minus c squared, and that's where that original connection came in, because as yet I've got no mention of b, but in that ellipse, I had that. The b and the c and the a were connected. a squared minus c squared is b squared. So b squared x squared plus a squared y squared equals a squared b squared. Almost there. Divide everything by a squared b squared, and you've got x squared over a squared plus y squared over b squared equals 1. Standard equation of an ellipse centred at the origin, intersecting the axes is uh, major axis is a, minor axis at b. Again, not something you need to derive in particular because you just remember the results. It's just for the algebraic practice of how to deal with equations involving those types of terms, in particular all those square roots.